Today's video is painting flowers. So we're gonna use um, our markers to draw and then paint if you don't have watercolor. You could also uh, draw them in pencil first. You could do them in Sharpie. Sharpie does not bleed. Um, so there's lots of really different ways we could do this. So let's start with, let's just do a variety of uh, techniques and then you can decide with the materials that you have at home what you're gonna use, okay? So I'm going to start with some flowers uh, using markers. And we're gonna put the marker or the flowers up top here. And I always like to use the lightest color first. I hope you're gonna be able to see it. So I want at least maybe four or five flowers and I'm gonna use a circle. I'm gonna put them at varying heights so that I have a variety of sizes. Now we kind of did this with our sunflowers, remember our Van Gogh sunflowers, before we left uh, for spring break. Um, so I'm gonna make concentric circles. First graders, you know what concentric circles are. We learned that at the very beginning of the year. So a concentric circle is a circle that goes around another circle, yeah? So in each one of those, yellow circles. I'm gonna use some different color markers and they can be close together. They could be very wide because we're gonna make a variety of lines inside all of these flowers, okay? So again, you can do yours however you want uh, with whatever colors that you want. If you are drawing just with pencil or marker right now, or with Sharpie right now, that's perfect. All right, so I've got my concentric circles. Now I'm gonna start adding some designs inside my concentric circles um, so that I can do some water and some watercolor. So remember, dot, line, curve, angle, and those lines make shapes, and those shapes make pictures. I'm gonna use repeated elements to make designs. So I'm gonna repeat my line over and over and over and maybe if I don't have watercolors, after I do a line design, then I take my water, and you wanna to remember to wipe it on the edge, and then I'm going to apply some water on the inside so that the marker becomes watercolor, okay? Now, if I had a Sharpie down, the Sharpie won't bleed. I'll show you that in a second. All right. So I don't wanna put my marker on top of the water right now. I want to maybe move on to a different flower, okay? Um, let me show you what the Sharpie looks like. This is very cool uh, when you don't want it to bleed. So let's do a repeated curve, like a flower petal. And I'm gonna do maybe some of those in Sharpies. And let's do one in marker, let's do a pink one, so that you see what I'm talking about with the bleeding or the, the watercolor that the marker makes. Okay, so now I'm going to use my water and I'm gonna color both. Oh, I'm coloring even the blue. I could do it all the way down. Ooh, that's actually kind of cool. So notice how the black line, because it's a Sharpie, does not bleed. All the other colors do. I'm gonna turn my paper. That actually was a happy accident. I really didn't intend for that to happen, but then sometimes awesome things do. Also notice how my blue is getting into the yellow, and what does blue and yellow make? Can you tell in my picture? I'll go ahead and go over it. Look, blue and yellow make green. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and then I can add more color. Let's go do this one, watch this one. I'm gonna go ahead and color on the outside. I'm applying water on the outside of that blue and there is my watercolor. So I don't even need to have watercolors if I don't have any. And then maybe I will leave 
that to dry and do some more stuff. All right, let's go over to this watercolor. This one's almost dry. Let's add some more, let's do a repeated angle. And a repeated angle is a zigzag. They can be any size that you want. And I'm gonna do something interesting because I know I'm gonna put water on top of this. Make sure you don't stick your hand in. Make sure you don't stick your hand in the um, water over here. I'm gonna add one more color because remember now that I know what the water does to the marker and how they bleed and blend together, I can plan my flowers ahead of time. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this for you. And I'm just gonna stay within the orange. And I'm blending, blending, blending. I'm rotating just so that I don't get um, water on my hand or I don't stick my head in this one. I'm going to pull a little bit of that blue out just a tad. Get some variety of color in there. Now with a still kind of wet brush, I'm going to go around that again, pull some of that blue out. See what happens. Maybe do the purple. I didn't put too much water on my brush. Okay. Now, let's take a green and do some stems, okay? I could do them straight down, which is fine, but I'm gonna go line, curve, line and then I'll go line, curve, line. Or you can just do two straight lines and you can draw your leaves. We've drawn many leaves this year with our lions. I'm gonna show you another cool trick here. Let's do another one. Every flower can have a different stem. Okay, now I can do two things. I can maybe put some yellow inside my leaves. And watch what happens. Let's go ahead and color our stems. So I'm mixing a little bit of yellow with my green. Not adding too much water. All right, 